I was just this season co-starred on an episode of uh, Parks and Recreation. Las Vegas has been in the films here. I have a fantastic scene with uh, Robert De Niro, Morgan Freeman, Kevin Kline, and Michael Douglas. Uh, and it's showing now in the UK and in Australia. Currently, my box office for the year is worldwide is 112 million plus uh, dollars. Um, I have a movie coming out in the theaters on a limited release called Five Hour Friends, uh, opening in San Diego. And of course, if it does well, it goes to a wider release. That's starring myself and Tom Sizemore and Kimberlyn Brown. Um, and I have um, another movie coming out in September called Dark Places, which is Dillian Flynn's book, bestseller. And that one, uh, there's a lady named uh, Libby that as a child uh, experienced seeing some murders of her family. And she goes to this club to discuss murders uh, to discuss her murder in particular, or the murder that she witnessed in particular, and I'm the head of the club. And of course, the lady is a, is, is an adult, is Charlize Theron. So Charlize and I work together, and we we do these scenes together. I have four other 2014 movies coming out, so it's pretty good for me right now as an actor. Well, I was 25 years old, and uh, I just decided one day I wanted to be an actor. And I called Screen Actors Guild and asked them how I got started, and they told me I needed to get an agent, and I needed, as soon as I could, join the union. I needed to get some training. So I got an agent, and I got the training, and I got the headshots, and I started getting commercials. Because at that point in this world that we live in now was different back then. If you were red hair and freckles or blonde, you got all the commercials. And I was red hair and freckles. So I got all the commercials. And that I became, I ended up in Los Angeles and New York and I became famous from commercials. And, uh, and I also got TV shows and movies and soap operas and all of that. But really it was more the commercials than anything. I did take a sabbatical from the business for 12 years and came back in 2009. And uh, I knew how to do it, so I just built my career back up. I'm, I'm a firm believer that all actors must study their entire career. Um, of course, I said I've worked with Robert De Niro, and he's been quoted as saying that actors should study their entire career. Uh, and so I think it's important that an actor never stops studying. You know, if for no other reason, just keep your acting chops in shape. Get trained. Uh, and, and, and the training has to be the right training. Uh, there's a lot of training out there. Any, any of it, just getting on your feet and working will make a difference. So there's no bad training per se, but there is better training uh, that, that's available to you and uh, I teach at Hollywood Bound and I, I've i kind of made an art out of how to teach uh, uh, actors how to work with the camera and how to audition and how to act for the camera and I, it's just based on what I've learned and what I do and uh, we're having some success we've got students that are We've got a lot of people that are booking movies right now. We just had a, uh, two movies here in Las Vegas, and one of them I had uh, some students that got in that, and I had some students that got in the other. One of them just worked with Michael Madsen in a movie, and uh, she had done no movies before she took my class for the eight, last eight months, and she's turned herself into a really good actor. Well, there's a couple of factors that have to be in place, and they seem to be. It's one thing to have incentives. But if you don't have people that are doing their part to promote that, we have Mayor Goodman here is just absolutely dedicated to it. And uh, she's just, uh, um, I can't say enough good things about what she's doing. And we have... 
you know, people that are movers and shakers in the business, like casting director Mary Lee Lear, that's putting a lot into bringing it to town. But the other part about it is, is that it is, a, it is an excellent incentive. And we're right across the border from California. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for them to come here in the first place. The locations, not only the strip, but, you know, the desert. And we've got a lot of good locations here. But it's also a little bit more economical to film here than it is in California. And then when you throw in, they're going to get some uh, tax incentives. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Paul Blart Mall Cop is coming here in a couple of months. And they're getting... Uh, it's a big budget, and they're getting a lot of tax incentive back, and so it's a lot of reasons for them to come. It's real simple. As an actor, your audition has to be good enough that the director or producer or the casting director, whoever's doing the casting, looks at what you do in that audition and says, I can film that. We could go right to the set and film it. Uh, we've had in the past here a lot of actors that have delusions of adequacy. They, uh, they think that what they're doing is acceptable. But if you look in the past, a lot of times when movies have come to town, uh, your competition for parts that they want to cast here is L.A. If it, if they don't get anybody that comes in and does it at production quality, they can't run the risk of just, oh, they look right for the part. You know, they'll be all right when they get on the set. They don't think that way. If you cannot do it in the audition, the same as on the set, they're not going to hire you. They're going to go to L.A. and bring them in. They don't want to do that, but they will do it. But then there's other levels. If you look at let's say L.A. standard, not standard here. If you look at L.A. standard, they may bring in 10 people to audition for a role. They're, everybody's going to be good, but there may only be, let's say, three that can do it where I could film that. But that's not still not a good position to be in because you're in a pick em. You're one in three, and the only thing that you can control is your performance. Now, if your performance is the same as one in three, then there's a lot of things you can't control. I've worked with that other actor before, so let's use them, would be one example. Um, there are other levels that you can learn to be at. The next level is, is I have got to have that performance in my movie. That's what I want. Um, but still, though, you're in competition with L.A., and there's no guarantee that there might not be at least one other actor that i got to have that performance in my movie. So there's even a more of a level. And that level is a moment. Like, you can't handle the truth, the way Jack Nicholson says that. Uh, we remember that moment. So if as an actor, if you can take one little second that the director says, oh, I've got to have that, uh, that's what I want, then they have to hire you. You've given them no option. Now, how do you do that? Well, you do it by coming to my class. I mean, that's because that's what we teach. We teach you how to prepare for an audition. And we teach you to recognize what's, I've got to have that in my movie. And we teach you how to find those little moments. I've got to have that moment. And that's what we do. Well, I, I, I have my wife. We don't have kids, and my wife is uh, very supportive of the career. Uh, you know, she gets to go on the set every once in a while, and we go to the Emmys about it. We, we don't go every year, but we go to the Emmys and the parties afterwards and stuff. And uh, she's pretty supportive of my career, and uh, uh, she likes it. And uh, so that's that's very good. Uh, and, you know, I don't, you know, I take time. I don't just, it's not all about me. I try to make things about my wife. That's important. We go to uh, uh, Desert Spring United Methodist Church. I like to usher there. 
Uh, we've got a great pastor. That's a good foundation to have in your life. And we have a lot of friends from the church, and we have friends in the neighborhood we live in that we socialize with. So it's real important to have that in your life. You can't, it just can't all be about you. Well, I do shoot movies all over dark places. We shot in Shreveport. I, I just shot a movie in San, San, San Diego, uh, San, Santa Monica uh, called Interfere. And of course, uh, five of our friends were shot in San Diego. I'll give you an example of a typical week. I knew on Friday that I was going to go to uh, Warner Brothers to audition for uh, Heart of Dixie on Monday. And I drove back. I drove there on Sunday, spent the night. I did the audition, drove back. Uh, the next day, I was doing a workshop here in town. I was teaching. And my agent called and said, I need you in 20th Century Fox this afternoon, uh, you know, in L.A., and uh, for a new TV series for a pilot. So I had to, I had to get there. I don't normally fly. I usually drive, but this time I had to fly. And I flew back, and then my commercial agent contacted me and said, you've got a commercial audition tomorrow in L.A. That was Wednesday. So I went to L.A. three days in a row. So that's kind of unusual, but that does happen. But to answer your question about being a working actor as opposed to being a star, can being a movie star be possible? Yes. Can have a TV series be possible? Yes. But you don't have to have that. Uh, I'm a recognizable actor. Uh, I go to the grocery store and people recognize me. Not every day, but they do. Especially if I was on TV last night or a movies in the theater or like I had a KFC commercial uh, about a year or so ago that was de directed by David O. Russell that was number two in the nation on social media. And, you know, people, oh, hey, hey, that guy, that grandpa in that commercial, and, and that does happen. But here's the point. If you can do two or three or four projects a year, a movie, a TV show, a commercial, you can make a living. Uh, people recognize you in the grocery store, and I'm telling you, you're a celebrity to them. You don't have to be Brad Pitt. Uh, you're really a celebrity around town, and, and, and it's good enough, and you can have a very enjoyable life doing it, and it's everything you ever thought it could be. It's everything. You better have the energy. Um, I work out. I do treadmill. I do the machines. I eat right. I, I eat a Mediterranean diet. Um, you have to have the energy. Uh, number one, you have to look good. You have to look healthy or they're not going to hire you unless they're looking for somebody that doesn't look healthy and then you're okay. But it's more than that. For example, the KFC commercial that I did, um, it was the one with the wrestling grandpa where I say, uh, it's my turn, I want mashed potatoes and gravy. And the grandson says, no, it's my turn, I want mac and cheese. And then we start wrestling. And the family comes in and they say, do, should we tell them we got all the sides? And, and then, and then they, uh, and then they, uh, flip to me and I, I've got him down. I say, say mashed potatoes. And he says, never. Well, I'll give you an example about that. When I auditioned for that, there were actors my age that were got totally out of breath and obviously they couldn't use them. Uh, we got together with a stunt man and worked the day before on the stunt. David O. Russell had us do that with his stunt man from the fighter, Ben Bray. And then the next day, we wrestled for 10 hours. We wrestled for 10 hours. Um, it's funny, they had an EMT on the set like they always do, and they told her to bring oxygen because there was going to be an elderly gentleman there. And she laughed at it because I never got out of breath in 10 hours because I was in shape. I made tens of thousands of dollars from that commercial all because I work out. And if that's not a good testimony, I don't know what is. Hello, Dan Hewitt Owens. And that's my chapter and verse.